Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McPhee Lava and this is Speedplay Papal Italy number 16. We left off with North German, or not North German, I keep calling them North Germans, uh, with German pan-nationalists taking over Austria but probably about to fall. We have Russia in kind of a weird and sort of gross looking position. So we're going to probably go to war with them again to just clean up their borders a little bit. And yeah, that's basically where we're at right now. We have a pretty powerful position in the world. We just need to charge through Romania in order to get against the Russians, and then from there go to war against the Russians themselves. Uh, we've basically taken everything that we need to from the British and French and Spanish and Portuguese or the North Germans or anything like that. All that's really left is the Ottoman Empire, Egypt, and then to start carving the world into our ideal sort of place, really. I mean, as weird as it sounds. We send our armies that were just more or less staying in Moldavia and Wallachia to invade their cultural brothers in Romania. Uh, the Russians, however, do just immediately hop into their defense. So we don't even have to declare a separate war. How convenient is that for us? Now we do have the smallest territory possible to march our armies from Romania into Russia. However, that doesn't really matter all that much. We don't have to worry about anything like supply concerns. I'm thinking that the next campaign I'm going to do is going to be in Hearts of Iron, just as I have been enjoying the military aspect of this game quite a bit. And it would be a slightly more in-depth thing. And who knows, if we time it well enough, we might be able to do the Hearts of Iron 3 campaign right on into when Hearts of Iron 4 is released, if they ever have a release date for that. Sorry guys, no, no offense to Paradox. Anyway, moving on. We are just adding tons of war goals against the Russians. We're going to primarily give Romania one of their core territories, which will give them access to the sea, so that would be nice to them. First though, we're going to cut them down to size, uh, which admittedly is a bit of a mixed message to the Romanians, and unfortunately Hungary is going after them trying to take a core, so we might have to go to war with Hungary to liberate Romania. It, it might be a big circular thing trying to keep uh, all of the borders in Middle Europa more or less uh, where we want them. At any rate, it doesn't matter all that much at the moment, we're just storming through Russian armies, they don't really put up anything considered a fight at this point. I'm not sure if they still don't have gas defense. However, just looking at all the casualty markers, it really seems as though they don't. And if they do, we have an amazing tech advantage in just several other areas. So it doesn't matter all that much anyway. Now our armies are just roving on through the Russian countryside. We have peaced out with the Romanians, that way we'll hopefully be able to uh, make peace with the Russians without having to take just so very much. We won't be able to completely liberate Ukraine, however we liberate a small rump state. We liberate Crimea because I thought it would be fun, and Armenia so that if we take over the Ottomans entirely we won't border the Russians. And I feel like that kind of makes their borders seem a little bit nicer. And it also liberates a bunch of peoples who didn't used to have that chance at being independent states and working their ways through the world on their own. So we, we've given them that. We also begin to build a large group of transports, and now that we're in a place where we can start creating the world in our image, it kind of bothers me that we're only second in industrial score despite the fact that we really obviously should be the leaders of the world. So we're going to go on an intensive program to become the most industrious state in the world. Now, there's two ways to do this. We could either A, focus on uh, creating craftsmen in our various territories, uh, just building up our industrial base and overcoming the United States through sheer strength of our industry. That's one solution. The other solution, and you'll notice we are fabricating a claim on them and transporting over tens of thousands of troops, is we're going to occupy the United States and basically turn off their industrial capacity for a few years as we just rove around their countryside, occupying it, which in turn shuts down their factories, 
and basically destroys their wealth as a country. So we're going to do that and just more or less win against them that way. You remember perhaps that the French had something like a thousand industrial score, uh, then they went through a series of political revolutions and now they have a few hundred industrial score. I don't know if we can quite expect the same to happen in North America. However, we're certainly going to give it an attempt. We drop off a solid 90,000 men, moving one group forward so that we'll always have a group in the back to fully occupy that territory so we can get troops quicker. And now we're going to send these forces back to Africa to get reinforcements. Now this is a bit dangerous because the Americans might come in with some really high numbers of troops, and in fact they already are and we're actually very very much risking our entire position right now also apparently american navies are in the mediterranean i'm not too concerned by this although it is frustrating we're going to pick up as many armies as we can unfortunately they are interdicting our navy which slows us down and this is really the moment of truth if we can just destroy these small american fleets and get our troops back to north america we will be able to win this. We just need to get there in time. And being there in time is really risky. We do manage to get a few extra men there. That means we can pull back our horrifically undermanned regiments. And as long as we just keep getting more groups into the battle, we will hopefully be able to eventually win it. At an era, we start moving forces over towards near, near the capital. And we're not in an amazing spot right now, however, we do have enough troops that I don't feel as though we are at any great risk of things just breaking. We're able to pull our most damaged regiments to the back, and that's uh, very important. That way they'll be able to reinforce. They don't reinforce when actually in combat. We start pooling together all of our troops so we can carry a massive group to the Americas next time around. And we just keep cycling out our armies. It's something the AI doesn't do, which means it just benefits our army tremendously. We also can make a few new units that have quite a significant tank presence, and we'll bring them over as well. And at this point, while the battle isn't going entirely in our favor, it really does seem to be something we're going to win. And we have enough troops that we can pull some forces out and attempt to encircle this American army, the goal now being, unfortunately they had enough forces nearby that they're able to attack our encircling groups, and now this is the risk that we face. And sadly the Americans still do have a significant naval presence. If we had done this war differently we would have destroyed their navy. First of all, we did lose about an entire army group because we were a bit too quick with that navy. So that's a bit unfortunate and they are threatening our encircling groups pretty severely. We get more escorts for this transport group and we can hopefully land them. And all right, at this point, while we do have a slight revolutionary issue, it's nothing too concerning. Our main focus is going to be to just win these encircling battles or at least keep them going on for enough of a prolonged period that will win the battle. And we just won the battle over a million losses on both sides that will probably devastate the American army moving forward and we will be able to just march our troops forward into their country without really any concern at this point. Although taking a look they do have some significant forces roving about it ultimately shouldn't be too much of a concern. And alright so we they are accepting one possible peace offer we're still second in industrial score so we're not going to take it we will just keep moving forward. There are some scattered bits of combat. We're going to focus mainly on keeping a defensive line that just completely cuts off the areas we've occupied from these scattered American armies. If they attack us, we will get some significant bonuses to combat and hopefully do fairly well. Uh, we just lost a battle in Crete. We're probably going to lose Crete eventually as uh, they just have too much of a presence and our navy is in North America right now. Although it doesn't really need to be, we could probably afford to move it back. We're not going to just at this moment. Now there are a few scattered battles, some of them not going particularly well for us. Overall though, they're all in a more or less controlled or at the very least not, not terribly poor position. 
So as long as we just don't lose any battles, even if we take a lot of casualties, as long as we can maintain this area where we have complete control of one end of their country, we're fine. If we ever have to make gaps in our lines, that's when we're going to lose all the progress we've made and things will turn to chaos. And that's how we'll know if the situation actually does get very poor. At any rate, for right now, we're doing very well. Our armies are still maintaining their defensive perimeter. These battles are going decently well for us. We're able to get reinforcements in and pull back the most wounded of groups in some but not all cases. And that's really all it takes, is as long as we're able to win some battles, we can pull the reinforcing elements out and move them to other areas. So that is going to be the uh, main concern. We are luckily able to start moving forward in some limited cases. Ultimately, the farther we expand, just because of the geography of America, the more armies it will take to uh, maintain the perimeter, and the less we'll actually be able to reinforce armies in the field. And now, um, that doesn't matter so much. We've basically won all of the battles at this point. We're able to just start driving forward in some pretty decent numbers and at a pretty decent rate. We're probably not going to ship any additional troops to the American theater, as at this point, resistance is pretty limited. We have the police state, so we have to worry a bit less about rebellions, which is great news because we don't have the ability to pass very many reforms anymore. And despite a couple battles, we have essentially completed this uh, war, our war aims. We're just going to continue roving through, occupying their territory. We have a few groups occupying the northeast, and a pretty consistent line over in the western part of their country. Now, there might be a few gaps. In fact, I am noticing that I did make a gap, although they just have so few troops on the front that it doesn't really matter anymore. We've also unlocked military airplanes, so we can start building those now. And weirdly enough, socialists have taken over our government. So for the first time, except for that one time we had a liberal party in charge, we no longer have our favored conservative party. Here you'll see the absolutely outrageous casualties in this last war. And we've always had less casualties than the Chinese, not in this case. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. We'll be back tomorrow.